820 is your time, you're on the juice. Welcome to it if you just tuned in. My name is TK, holding it down and hosting it till 12 midnight, man. Four hours of greatness, four hours of juicy stuff, four hours of conversation and music. And tonight we're not short of any conversation because in the building I have a gentleman who is a good friend. And tonight we discuss the effects of COVID-19 on the Haburoni public transport industry. To help us with that discussion, his name, two words, Debo K. Alright, the other is a word, uh, the other is a letter. <laughs> right. Welcome to the show, bro! Thanks for having me, TK. How you doing? I'm feeling nice, man. Yeah? Yeah, man. I'm, bas I'm basking in God's goodness, man. I like that. I right. like that. I like how devout... This guy is a devout Christian. Yes, sir. The moment I told him he was going to get on the show, he's like, Hallelujah! Yes, sir! <laughs> All day, every day. I like that you be oozing out with the Christian and the leaving right there. It's been a long time. Yes, sir. And I'm glad that you're here. And you want to discuss with us about a documentary that you've been checking out, a yes, documentary sir. that you were manufacturing, yes, sir. about to come out one of these good days. Yes, sir. The effects of COVID-19. Right, right. First of all, the documentary is coming out in two days. In two days. It's on Thursday. Dope. Yes, sir. All right. Looking forward for that. And, um, and the documentary is about um, it's about COVID-19. Yeah. How it's affected uh, the city of Habroni and more specifically the, the public transport system. I love it. Yes, sir. All right, that's that for tonight. So be sure to just participate. All right, you hit us up with a text message if you have any questions, any comments. One four nine six two is the SMS line, or call us in three nine five six nine six two. We'd love to hear the voices, right? Yes, sir. And a few other things. But before we dive into it, man, introduce yourself. Who is Thibo K? Beautiful. Thibo K is a uh, Botswana. Filmmaker, yes, sir. My third year media studies student at the University of Botswana. Thirty years. Third year. Third. Yes, sir. Third. Um, I do what I love, man. I thank God that um, in in my early twenties, he gave me the the realization that um, I'm going to to do film. I'm going to create content. Right. And that's what I've been doing ever since. I like it. Yes. Sir. How does it make you feel, man, when you create? It's amazing. You're like God. It's You're a creator. It really, I really do feel like I'm, I'm co-creating with God. I like that. Um, it's, it's an amazing feeling, man, to tell people's stories, to, to tell stories that are not being told, mm -hmm. which is actually my passion right now. Right. Um, I'm just going to the, to the very least people that are overlooked in society and try to be a voice for those people. I like that. Why is it so important to you, man, to be the voice of people or to be the mouthpiece of stories untold about Botswana living any other place in the country? First and foremost, it's my service to God, man. Right. I feel like we are placed here to serve other people. Right. The talents we have are not our own. Right. Um, and second, man, I feel like Botswana's stories are untold. Um, and the creative scene especially has just like been fixated on telling um, Botswana stories from a South African perspective, a South African style, mm. man, American style. Mm. I feel like we've overlooked Botswana's stories, you get me? That's right. The rawness, the, the, the naked truth about who yeah. we are. So yeah. that's, that's what I'm trying to do right now, just tell our stories, man. It could possibly mean that every other story that is not told by our people, right, could lack the genuine authenticity yes. that it needs to have. Yes, sir. Right? And I love that word authenticity yeah. because it means realness. It's the truth. Right. And you can't have somebody come from out there. No, 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 no. no. Hey. Hey. Because what do they know? You exactly. know what I mean? It's got to come from our people. I'm exactly. glad that you're here, man. Yes, I'm super honored that you're here to Thank share you your having. story. But uh, before we get to the documentary and exactly the effects of COVID-19 right. on the industry that we have chosen for tonight, how was it for you personally, COVID-19, the lockdown? It, it was a really good period for me to, to kind of like introspect, uh -huh. um, to reflect on. I had goals at the beginning of the year, so right. I had like time to think, okay, cool, right. how close am I to achieving those goals? I like that. And I, I grew closer to God in that time, so for me it was a really good experience. Yeah. Because the birth, everything you're seeing right now was birthed during that time. During the lockdown. <laughs> yes, sir. Look at that. One man's something something is another man's something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I like it. Talk to us, bro. The documentary. Right. It's called Bahuiti Masachaba. Lovely. It's uh, the drivers of society uh -huh. of Botswana. Um, it's a seven minute, well, actually, it's an eight minute documentary. Right. I'm speaking to about seven, eight. I actually interviewed way more people, but I had to cut some of them off because they were. How come I'm not part of it, man? Because I was speaking to act drivers, commie drivers, oh, yeah. taxi drivers. And I'm not, I'm not. Well, you get me. Right. <laughs> um, so um, I actually had to cut some people off because a lot of them were being very political. Ah. Um, you got it, it happened in the heat of the moment. You get me? Like, as soon as the lockdown happened, that's actually when I took the cameras when into the street. Um, so people are very. Did very you have a permit, T? The first time I did it. Okay. I'll be honest. Right. The second time around, I had to like be real official. Yeah. Much on equipment. Okay. Right. I had a team with me. I had equipment with me. Love it. Love it. 
Um, so, um, like I said, I spoke to guys, asked them real, raw questions. I tried to have them be as honest as, as possible, mm -hmm. try to not filter their opinions. Because, like I said, the aim is to, to help have their voices be heard. That's right. Right. I like it. And so, tell us what it really means when you say you want to give us the effects of COVID-19. What do you feel uh, from your experiences and obviously the interviews that you carried out? Yeah. Um, what are some of the effects? I, I, I came across this video on, on Facebook, right? It was mm -hmm. um, published on a page called the, the Argus Online. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and it was like hundreds of, of Botswana stranded at the bus rank. I remember that, yeah. You get me, you get yeah. me. That really yeah. touched me. I was, and I thought about it from a different perspective. I was like, listen. Those coming drivers that are there are doing their best to try and help these people. Mm, mm. Now those coming drivers, that story isn't really being heard. Right, right, you get right, me? right. So I was like, look, let me just try get these people to share their story. So I went into the streets, I asked them real questions, like, okay, cool, so how has this pandemic, this outbreak, this these lockdowns, how they affected your day-to-day -day activities? Oh, yeah. How they affected your business, how they affected your personal life? Right. Yeah, I don't want to talk too much about it because I want to watch the documentary. <laughs> the documentary. Yes, right, you know what? What I feel could be a little, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I need to know why the public transport mm -hmm. industry yeah. and not right. any other industry. I get you. Right, because COVID-19, the lockdown, and everything else that surrounds COVID-19 yeah. yeah. affected not just the public transport industry, yeah. Literally every industry was affected. Yes, so why is the documentary documentary just about uh, public transport? Now you see this right here. The answer to this question is what makes me very different from every other content creator, every other filmmaker in the industry. Right, right. I'm sent. To I'm the getting excited when you say right. that. I'm, <laughs> right, right, right. I'm sent to the very least, my brother. Ah. I'm sent to the people that are overlooked. Okay. I'm sent to tell the stories of people that nobody else would tell. Were they overlooked? I feel like they well, want. It has to be more than every other industry. If you bring it out, they were overlooked, right? Yes, sir. Then we had to compare. Okay, maybe overlooked more than every other industry that was. Right. I, I feel like whenever I hear about public transport guys, I never actually hear the the taxi drivers, the coming drivers. <laughs> That's I'll true. hear I'll hear everything about them, but I never actually get to hear them speaking. Okay. Voicing their thoughts. You get right. Me? Right. And 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 this is also kind of close to another campaign that I did recently called Beng Balahazi. Which is, oh. I was also going to like people on the streets. These are guys that were during the lockdown. These guys were still on the streets, trying to hustle, trying to grind. People that were working in the informal sector. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Um, people that were some of them were, were people that were the, the frontliners, the mm -hmm. essential workers. Mm -hmm. So like everything around my brand, created by the K brand, just to, to tell stories that are, are quote unquote ugly stories. Oh yeah. yeah. I, get I get that. Yes. I get that. So then, where when you started? You spoke of how political it may have been. Oh, yeah. You can run away from it, right? Yeah. Uh, when you're interviewing these drivers, yes, sir. they were definitely not happy about Ish. a few things that the government is doing or not doing. <laughs> right? yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> what do you make of some of the... We, we obviously have to watch the documentary right, right. to at least find out what exactly did they have to say. Yeah. But your documentary, if I, if I got you correct, you say they tried to run away from the politics surrounding the issues? I mean, I mean, there were some people that were dropping names, the people oh, yeah. that were attacking certain political You parties. didn't want that. I don't want that. Yeah, it could be de defamatory, right? You didn't you I'm not trying to have any of that. Because I, one, I, I'm a Montana proud, Montana patriotic, I love my government, you get me? Oh yeah. So I'm not trying to have anybody bash it. I feel like we can point out when it slips up here and there, but like to bash it is not my swag. I like that. You get me? So, I like that. so I was really just focusing on, okay, telling, telling people how we feel let down by our government mm -hmm. and, and also kind of reaching out to our government, speaking out and saying, listen, if you could help us with one, two, three. Oh, yeah. And that's what a lot of the people, the, the drivers were saying, they were like, look, Gabi, please help us with one, two, three. We're not asking for much. If you could just do more of this, do a little of this, it really make our lives so much easier. All right. Uh, so then the documentary just really focuses on that. Yes. Uh, obviously, a few suggestions from the drivers right, right. on what the government could do or not do. Right. Uh, what else does the documentary focus mm -hmm. on, man, apart from everything else that you've seen? Um, it also speaks about the, the, the public, the general public, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. the role they play. Oh, yeah. Um, right. Without going into too much. <laughs> You really want us to watch Please, this? Please, listen, it's on Facebook, it's on YouTube, I created by the old king. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Um, okay, so no one else has done this, I'm sure. Yes, sir, I'm certain. I, I'm pretty sure there's no one else who has done a documentary on some of the industries that have been struck so hard right. by COVID-19. And uh, it must feel very special, right? 
They really do. What do you expect the ordinary Matwana who's going to check out this documentary to come up with? To, one, to, to, to be inspired by being a Matwana. Mm -hmm. I'm really trying to instill national pride for people to see the city different, for people to see the common drivers and taxi drivers different. Yeah. Get me? Yeah. Because I feel like we overlook them so much in society, just walk past them. If I'm a kumbi, you're gone. That's it. Right That's it. Yeah. So I'm trying to stop people for a second to really look at these people. And next time you're in a be like, really take time to like appreciate what this person is going through to yeah. get you you're going. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about a situation where you get in a person's car, you're a passenger, right. and they have skirmishes with drivers of combis or taxis with the way they drive. Do you feel the sympathy that you so sick from people might be a little shortcut or short circuited by the fact that you know how it is when you're driving on the road. Mm. Most people don't complain about other passengers driving, mm -hmm. like ordinary passengers driving. Mm -hmm. It's almost usually, you correct me if I'm wrong, but in my experience, it's always been ah, these ones, they drive this way, they mm -hmm. drive that way. Mm -hmm. So, apart from the problems that they faced during COVID 19, which could be the economical problem, mm -hmm. do you feel we might lack the sympathy yes. that we need to have for these people and that might be based on the way they drive or the way they carry themselves in the world. Definitely so. Guys, look, these people, they, they literally carry the nation. You get me? Right. Like most of it's us... public don't. transport, yeah. Do you get me? Yeah. Like they literally drive the, the, the city, uh, the country to work to and fro daily. You get me? So obviously you have to be leaning towards them <clears> because they're not just carrying... You going to work, is just you and maybe you're dropping your kid off at school. Mm -hmm. This guy's carrying like half the city. You get me? And this guy's waking, really up, does, yeah. this guy's waking up at 3 a.m. to be working. He's going to be doing that till like 8 p.m., 9 p.m. at night. Is this why they may be speeding all the time? <laughs> because they have the whole nation on the back. So it looks like, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, rush hour. Jackie money you make. Jackie money you make. <laughs> money you make, man. What else do we need to know about the documentary, man? We need to play some music and then we get back. But before that, anything else you want to hint on? And then we talk about it to full detail. I'm actually trying to reach out to people to okay. partner with me. I'm looking for platforms. I'm trying to take it to TV as well. Right, so right. I'm hoping like through all of this that people will reach out to me and, and find out how we can make that happen. Lovely. Yes, 832 is your time. You're on The Juice. My name is TK and in the building, Debo K who is a content producer and creator. He's also a filmmaker. And tonight we're talking about a documentary he made about the effects of COVID-19 on the public transport in the country.